Welcome to Contact. Good to be with you today. We're in a wonderful series called Looking Forward and it has so many aspects. Um, if you've been, you know, just kind of in the depths of, of um, despair, you've just been uh, discouraged by the things that you're looking at, we're going to raise your eyes and raise your focus into things that um, will be a blessing in your life in the here and now, all coming from the Word of God. So we're in a series called Looking Forward, and today's message is Come Out. Right, and <laughs> specifically that statement is made by the Apostle Paul relative to the Corinthian church that he was talking to about coming out of the world. Right. You know, it, it, and, and that's the idea that, that we want to convey to people uh, today. Yes, and whether you're a new believer, a young believer, or you've been in the kingdom of God for some time, you'll always have to do some inventory and decide where do I need to come out. So stick with us. We'll be right back. Set your reminders and get ready for an extraordinary worship night with David and Nicole Binion this March 22nd. Head over to faithlandmarks.org for more information on this free event. Ladies, it's time to stop looking at the past and get our eyes focused back to the future. God has a vision, a purpose, and a plan unique to you. Mark your calendars for a remarkable Ladies Fellowship event this March 24th at 7 p.m. Join us as we dive into the Word of God, align our outlook with His, and propel forward into the destiny God has placed in each of us. This event is free and open to women of all ages. For more information, go to faithlandmarks.org. Ladies Fellowship, Back to the Future, March 24th at 7 p.m., 8491 Chamberlain Road, Richmond, Virginia. With on-time messages, exciting events, an active children's ministry and youth group, Bible school, and much more, there will always be something for you and your family. Come worship, receive, and fellowship with us every Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m., Sunday evenings at 7 p.m., and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Want to find out more about us? Visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. We look forward to seeing you here at Faith Landmarks Ministries. Welcome back. Really glad that you're with us today. We're continuing with a series. The, the series is entitled Looking Forward, uh, which is really all about hope, exercising hope in your life, uh, even though your eyes may be seeing some very dark things. Today's uh, title specifically is Come Out. And, and so uh, this is a, a quote uh, from actually the book of Isaiah, which I think you might uh, have plans to read. Right. Okay. And the Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthians about coming out of the world. Okay. So, uh, you know, what, what we want to say to you is that the trouble that you're experiencing in the world today is something that you can actually remove yourself from spiritually. <laughs> Now, you're not going to remove yourself physically from the planet, uh, per se, but you can remove yourself spiritually from the trouble that's in the earth today. That's right. And this, we're not encouraging you to, you know, become a recluse or a hermit, you yeah. know, because uh, we've been given a commission right. to re uh, a ministry of reconciliation. And so we can be in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. And the commission to be salt and light still stands. Right. So you can't do that at home behind uh, in your living room. And that's why we encourage people who have uh, been displaced for different reasons, different things have come on the earth that have displaced people in what they are, were in a routine of doing, of worshiping, of fellowshipping with the saints, of being involved in the kingdom things. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's time to come back out into uh, the, the light, so to speak, to be engaged in our first message in this series, we talked about uh, pressing towards the mark for the high call that God is calling each believer into. For each person, um, you have a part to play. And so um, if you've sort of uh, 
fa- fallen back into uh, associations with uh, an identification with the world. Yeah, because, you know, it says, you know, we've been brought out of the old and brought into the new. Yeah. And so we need to stay in the new and not get pulled back into the old. Right. right. So come out of the world, which is going to involve uh, dropping name tags, associations, uh, and things that you uh, might have been familiar with in the past in the world. Right. You're well, going to come out from among them. In fact, I can read it to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, Apostle Paul, and this is a quote uh, from the book of Isaiah. It says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will uh, receive you. So the the unclean thing in uh, like today's world, it, 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 the last broadcast you just made a brief mention of um, lottery tickets. Yeah, uh, gambling has become a really big thing. Yeah, I, I when I, I stopped at the gas station in this little remote, uh, out of the way town, you know, it's really a. Uh, I don't know, not even a town. Yeah, Yeah, I walked in and they had four slot machines in the gas station. (laughs) And they were filled. Every every seat was filled with people, you know, at a slot machine in in the gas station. Right. And uh, so that's becoming quite a a thing today. So in our lifetime, gambling has moved from from, uh, way back uh, out of view into the forefront. And now, you know, there's virtually every sport... Uh, that wow, yeah, that's uh, you right. know, all the sports have have become riddled with gambling. Mm-hmm. And that's just one thing. Yeah, that's just that's one just thing. One. But that, me, that's the nature of the world. Let's read it to uh, out of this. We're we're enjoying this passion translation. It's very. Uh, you know, direct and uh, our lingo, so to speak. So I'm going to start in verse 14. It says, don't continue to team up with unbelievers in mismatched alliances. (laughs) Uh, For what partnership is there between righteousness and rebellion? Who could mingle light with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Yeah, and bearing in mind that uh, all of this is likely and possibly brand new to you as a believer, particularly if you're a uh, recently come to Christ believer. Yeah, but I would be so bold as to say that a lot of people are vying for your uh, attention. You know, it's like they want you to join their group. That's right. They want you to join their protest. They want you to join, like it says here, their rebellion. Exactly. Whatever it might be, they want to rebel against. They're trying to get followers. Right. And and the vehicles that are available to people to do these things now. uh, Wow. You know, in our lifetime, we've also seen the uh, the Internet be born. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cell phones did not even exist. Yeah. Right. You know. So we're talking about the world we're living in right now. Right. And so that's another thing we said at the beginning of this broadcast uh, when we started this series is that, um, you know, we're we're the Bible is relevant to you this moment. Right. You know, God is telling you right now, I'm going to be so bold to say that God is telling you right now not to team up with unbelievers in mismatched alliances. I'm going to be so bold as to tell you that that applies to you today. This is not, you know, from, uh, you know, 3000 years ago or however long it was written because, you know, uh, Te- technically, 2,800 years ago when Isaiah prophesied that. Yeah. So it's influence. It's all about influence. You yeah. know, you can get every kind of book on influence, personal growth, all the things that you want to. But it's all b- try to get your vote, so to speak, to get you to line up with their philosophies. And the Bible right here is telling you, you, you know, the only safe uh, place for you to be is with the word of God, the wisdom of God the kingdom of God and the family of God. 
Yeah. You know, and, and it's, a, it's a shame to say that not all people who call themselves Christians actually live like Christians. So then there's another distinction that has to be made. Is this person, you know, I've read enough in the Bible to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't really think that, that you're supposed to do that if you're really a believer. Well, that's where the wisdom of God comes in. Right. So you'll be weakened because you're, 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 your focus will be divided. Your allegiance will be divided. Right. The Bible says you can't have fresh water and bitter water coming out of the same fountain. So strength re is in focus. Right. Strength is in having one eye. Here's another example. Uh, New Testament says that the love of many will wax cold. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about coming out, it also means that you're going to come out of hate groups you're going to, uh, which are associations. Yeah. Uh, you're going to stop calling yourself by those names. Well, I want to stop and say this. Now, uh -huh. I'm going to tell you one of the big things people, they call them rebellious. They, they try to say, they're, see, they're trying to deny what God's word says is actually true. And they call somebody that uh, defines the Bible, what the Bible says is, is right conduct and wrong condu yeah. conduct. They call that hate speech. Yeah. <laughs> when you are just quoting the Bible, they right. call it hate speech. Right. So they are, they try to turn the tables right. on you and say, well, if you don't tolerate my sinfulness, then you're a hate person. And so, um, but you know, we can't stop saying what the word says and it's not us that's saying it we can show you chapter and verse right and that's what we're doing today so uh, what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever what do you have in common well you might both work in a secretarial pool at an office and you might have that in common mm -hmm. but after hours what do you have in common they're going to the bar uh, they're gonna go pick up some guys or they're gonna go pick up some girls or whatever, right? right. <laughs> and and what do you have in common with that? You know, and now you've got a choice. You can be a binary. That's a new people That's group. That's a new word. That's a new people I'm group. I'm still figuring out what and, does that mean. But you know what? I still haven't yeah. found it in the Bible yet. <laughs> it's just not in there. Yeah. But anyway, what friendship does God's temple have with demons? For indeed, we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will make my home in them and walk among them. I will be my God and they will be my people. I will be come their, out, their God. Yeah. yeah, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch nothing that is unclean and I will embrace you. I will be a true father to you and you will be my beloved sons and daughters, says the Lord Yahweh Almighty. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Be ye separate, mm -hmm. separate from the world. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the actual reality of that is in spirit. Mm -hmm. See, because yeah, uh, we keep saying, you know, we're not talking about isolated groups that go up in the mountains and never talk to anybody. <laughs> no. we're, we're talking about it's a separation in your uh, mental, you know, pathway in your actions. You're spiritually different mm -hmm. from people in the world. So you can't be like them. Right. And yeah. so, you know, uh, a good example, you talked about love, mm -hmm. you know, loving one another instead of hating. Right. And so that's a very uh, important characteristic yeah. of a believer. Right. And Jesus gave us two commandments to love God with all our heart, mm -hmm. soul, mind and being and to love our neighbor as ourself. Right. So really, honestly, and he, God t uh, tells us to love the world, love the people in the world. Uh, lo yes. Yeah. And love them enough to lovingly hold the ground on what the Bible says and right. not compromise. Right. And, you know, because that's not loving them. No. It's not telling someone that there's a, a, you know, a big stain on the back of their coat that they can't see. That's not love to let them walk around right. with something that is uh, derogatory that they don't even know about. Right. So, you know, we don't meddle. We don't meddle in, in, in people's lives, but we do promote the truth. Right. So we've got more scriptures along these lines that we're going to be talking about. Yeah, the New Testament is actually full of this, and, and it comes down to lifestyle 
uh, as a believer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it has to do with family. Uh, you know, how are things going in your family? Uh, and all of these things uh, are a part of coming out. So here's another example. We're going to read this and I'll jump ahead <laughs> mm -hmm. and read it in Ephesians 4 verse 17. This okay. is again in the Passion Translation. So it says, so with the wisdom given to me from the Lord, I say, you should not live like the unbelievers around you. That's pretty simple. Yeah. Who. Sure sounds simple <laughs> just saying it. Who will walk in their empty delusions. Their corrupted logic has been clouded because their hearts are so far from God. Their blinded understanding and deep-seated moral darkness keeps them from the true knowledge of God. Because of spiritual apathy, wow, this is what we have to really be careful of. That's why we need to run with passion right. towards that goal is because spiritual apathy, they surrender their lives to lewdness, impurity, and sexual obsession. But this is not the way of life that Christ has unfolded within you. If you have really experienced the anointed one and heard his truth, it will be seen in your life. For we know that the ultimate reality is embodied in Jesus. Right. So uh, back in the old days, don't uh, talk the talk if you don't walk the walk. Mm -hmm. Right. So that that comes down to lifestyle. And that's something that we became very familiar with. And, you know, it's like in the early days of our uh, walk in the Lord, we we had to learn how to walk in him or to live in him, to uh, act all these things out. Yeah. And, and so we got a whole new generation of people. And uh, it you know, the world that they live in is very, very complex. But at the same time, it comes down to really simple. It's either God or it's the devil. <laughs> you know, and, what, and like the passage that you read a minute ago is, you know, there, there's no uh, fellowship between light and darkness. And this is really a journey. We want to talk to you about, uh, you know, some people get, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the the change the comparison you know but you have to understand you have to start you start as a baby Christian right you start where you are you start where you are and it's and gonna be a step-by-step -step process it takes time for yeah. uh, you know if you've had had a habit of being angry right you know of uh, you know somebody say something and you're just ready to fight you know mm -hmm. that's that's something that takes some discipline and some right. experience coming out of the control of substances you know, uh, drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, that's a step-by-step -step process. That's right. Yeah. But you, the, the number one thing is, do you want to? Yeah. And so God helps you with your want to. He gives you the grace right. to come out of those kind of um, and that's exactly, relationships, yeah. um, addictions. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we're talking about this on, on the television broadcast is because Christians need to know that that being a Christian includes coming out of the world. That's right. And yeah. your and your identity, what you look like, you know, um, it's not a fashion. There's no fashion police in the kingdom of God. Right. But, you know, there is uh, there is a uh, it's not necessarily, the, you know, the type of T-shirt you wear, the type of jeans you wear. We're talking about your identity with uh, some kind of uh, ideology. Right. That that ties you to the old life you used to live. Right. So uh, a little bit more uh, terminology. Uh, one of the the, the uh, distinguishing characteristics of God's person is holiness. Mm -hmm. And in which case, it, it you know there are no uh, gods that are holy other than Him. Mm -hmm. And so you wouldn't even know what holiness is until you come in contact with him. And it, it, it's a power, it's a force that's definable just simply by experiencing it. So let's talk about, um, where you, you're talking about coming out. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a passage in the scripture where it says, I haven't restricted you. You have been restricted by your own affections. Mm -hmm. I think that's in Isaiah. 
uh -huh. um, when he's talking about coming out, you know, because there's things that they got attached to right. that they didn't want to let go of. Right. And letting go of things that you're familiar with, for things that have brought you comfort, for things that have supported you. Or could be destroying you. Exactly. Yeah. You know, habits, uh, whatever it might be, you know, it's like you're, you're holding on to the familiar and God has this other life for you, but in order to grab a hold of this other life, you have to let go of the old. Yeah. And so many people, it's a fear tactic. They don't know about the unknown territory right. that they're going to walk into. I remember years ago, I mean, many years ago, mm -hmm. Hugh Smith preached that message on, you know, this guy's not going to let go of his beer can. <laughs> You know, that's given him all this comfort and support, you know, for all these years. He, he, until he can really understand the concept of Jesus, you know, he, he's going to keep he's holding gonna hold on. on to that beer can. <laughs> right. You know, are you telling me, you know, there's something else that's going to make me feel better or forget about whatever I've experienced in life that I'm really medicating? Right. There's so many people medicate. Right. You know, experiences they've had in life and, and they don't realize that the more they medicate um, a pain, the deeper it goes and right. the longer it takes, right. you know, to get loose from it. Yeah. So um, don't waste any more time um, being tied to something that is not helping your life. God is asking you to come out. Right. Come out into the newness and fullness yeah. there is in Christ. Now, I want to share just a brief moment about my initial salvation experience mm -hmm. because I had a visitation from the Lord Jesus Christ after I got saved. He actually came to my house, stood at the foot of my bed, and called me into the ministry. Mm -hmm. wow. And, and mm -hmm. the, uh, like I said a moment ago about dis distinguishing characteristic, I had never come in contact with holiness before in my life, but I immediately knew what it was. And he is holy. Mm -hmm. And when he, when he stepped into my room, I was immediately ashamed of what I had sitting on the kitchen table. Now it was in another room through a wall. It's like I, I could, but I, I knew it was over there and I knew he could see it. <laughs> and, and I was ashamed of myself. It was drug paraphernalia, mm -hmm. and uh, of course I had been, you know, using drugs, but I got completely healed and delivered. Uh, but that, you know, just a, a little experience of coming in contact with holiness gave me something to aspire to. Wow, like, that's so amazing, and I know everybody doesn't have the opportunity to have a real visitation like that, yeah. but, I, but you can experience the power of God when you uh, walk uh, in the path that God has laid out for all believers. You know, he says, don't for forsake the assembling of yourselves together as right. the manner of some is. So in other words, um, staying in an assembly, a, 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 a church body, a, a church body that is on fire for God. That's going to really help you. Yeah. Whereas if you stay independent and we're talking about coming out of the old relationships, right. you know, where you the guys meet down at the at the bar and you all have a drink, you know, after work and shout, you know, slap each other on the back, you know, you know, that that's not profitable, really. And maybe you've enjoyed it in the past, but mm -hmm. God's telling you to get totally submerged into his plan for your life, into the body of Christ right. and the, where there's power. And so by reading the word of God and by, you know, inviting God into your daily life, you can begin to experience, um, you know, his download that gives you the ability to, to look forward and to, yes, and to let go of things right. that you have become attached That's to. That's why we read that about with the Apostle Paul saying, saying about let letting go of the past. Yeah. Okay. Press forward. Good or bad, we're going to let it go. Yeah. We're going to come out from among them, touch not the unclean thing. Right. Well, right. we've got a little bit more to share with you. We've got some things to show you. Stick with us and we'll be right back. Set your reminders and get ready for an extraordinary worship night with David and Nicole Binion this March 22nd. Head over to faithlandmarks.org for more information on this free event. 
Ladies, it's time to stop looking at the past and get our eyes focused back to the future. God has a vision, a purpose, and a plan unique to you. Mark your calendars for a remarkable Ladies Fellowship event this March 24th at 7 p.m. Join us as we dive into the Word of God, align our outlook with His, and propel forward into the destiny God has placed in each of us. This event is free and open to women of all ages. For more information, go to faithlandmarks.org. Ladies Fellowship, Back to the Future, March 24th at 7 p.m., 8491 Chamberlain Road, Richmond, Virginia. Through your faithful support, our missions efforts continue to grow and reach new people all over the world. Even areas affected by war and strife do not hinder our progress. Moldova, a country bordering Ukraine to the southwest, is just one of the areas that we support ministries in. Since February of 2022, CRU has been providing aid to thousands of refugees evacuating Ukraine due to rising aggressions from Russia. Recently, we received a detailed report on the mission's efforts ongoing there. Here's a summary of what has been accomplished in the past couple of months. Despite all the horror of the situation with the war, we are continually having conversations about Christ with people of all ages, standing together for the destruction of enmity between Ukrainians and Russians. Until recently, we only had 745 refugees come through our Crew Refugee Center. Now we have been receiving refugees by the tens of thousands. We are distributing food, Christian literature, and preaching the gospel to everyone we can. We are believing for additional resources so that we can do even more. When you sow into missions, you equip FLM with the ability to support these areas impacted by the world. Now is the time. Sow your seed into missions today. Really glad that you've been with us today on Contact. And admittedly, this is a heavy subject for the world that we live in today. Recommend that you, uh, you, you can get this um, multiple times in your life off the internet sources that we uh, share with you. Uh, we also would like to invite you. You were talking about uh, church. Yeah. We'd like to invite you to church. You know, come, come to church. <laughs> if you're here in the locale, uh, anywhere, uh, just come to church. It'll come bless in fellowship you. with other believers of like-minded faith and uh, who are all going through life together but helping support each other as they go through life. And that's really an important concept. Um, you know, they'll bring you strength and encouragement and you can be an encouragement to others as well. So thank you for joining us on Contact today and we will see you back next time. <music>